This is DN. Headphones are very interesting. When I first got into them years ago, I thought that spending X amount on a headphone would equate to a premium listening experience. I was right to a certain extent. You do need a decent pair of headphones for good sound, but also it alone cannot deliver its full potential. Headphones not adequately and sound really rather lifeless and limp. Today, we are going to talk about the time I almost cleared out my bank account, but I did not. Burson Audio loaned me the Soloist Voyager for a review. They did not get to preview this review prior to release. Although I use IEMs the most often on my daily commune, at home, I prefer listening to my headphones or should my family not complain too much, my two channel speakers. Today, we will be reviewing the Burson Soloist Voyager featuring the final D8000 Pro. I was rocking an old pair of AKG X Mesh Drop K7XX. Those were pretty decent some years back, but comparing things to what we have at the various audio shows these days, those cannot compete. And as such, to review the Soloist Voyager, I think the most apt headphone that I have would be the final D8000 Pro Limited Edition. With the D8000 Pro Limited Edition and the Soloist Voyager, if I actually do own them, can be the end of my audiophile journey. I know I usually cover IEMs and not so much about headphones, so I'll be talking about the D8000 Pro used in this review to give some context to the Burson Soloist Voyager. Now, the final D8000 Pro was a headphone that I've always enjoyed. Admittingly, initially, I was not the biggest fan of planar headphones as my perception of the driver technology was mainly due to Odyssey. They are fans of the brand, but for me, I've always found Odyssey to be overly warm and really hard to drive. But that all changed when I tried the final D8000 Pro, which showed me that you can actually get a rather well-balanced sound using planar drivers. I was using the Yulong Aquila 2 deck amp. I found the Aquila 2 to have an amazing deck section where it is high resolution and also a glow to the sound that is more analog sounding, which I really enjoyed. The amp section of the Aquila 2 is adequate, but I always knew that the D8000 Pro could be better from flagship setups as I have heard them at shows. So in January this year, I happened to be Hong Kong and by chance they did have the D8000 Pro paired with the Burson Soloist Voyager. I tried it and was just really blown away. I could not forget how that sound and that left me one thing more. I knew the M section of the Yulong Aquila 2 was good but not as good as the Soloist Voyager. The Soloist Voyager is the creme de la creme from Burson featuring everything one would want in a desktop amplifier. Pure Class A, mirrored dual mono fully balanced. The purpose of a desktop amplifier to me is to provide exhilarating sonics bar none. And using a class A setup is the epitome of that and that results in super low distortion levels. While it's true that it is less efficient and a little warm, but to me, sonics always take first precedence. Not only that, the Soloist Voyager has a dual mono design which means that your left and right channels are completely isolated. This ensures that both left and right channels get their own independent power, eliminating any sort of cross-channel distortion. Burson has been famed for producing op-amps and in this copy of the Soloist Voyager, we have six of their state-of-the-art V7 op-amps. The thing that sets the Soloist Voyager apart from other premium desktop amplifiers would be how dark the background is of the music and I'm really happy to report that the silent power modules used in the power supply circuitry is really top class. I hear no hiss when you are on headphones, nothing, just you and the music like how you want things to be on your first date or any date. You and your girlfriend, no annoying friends, no annoying children, no distractions, nothing separates you from the music. So I tested these with some more sensitive IEMs. While honestly there is just a smidgen of noise, I won't say that it takes away from the control of tone afforded by the Slowest Voyager. Also not mention that this has a lot of power so it's very well controlled in that sense. Next, in terms of input, the Soloist Voyager allows for a grand total of four sources, two pair of XLR inputs and two pairs of RCA. For outputs on the front, you have an XLR, a 6.3mm and a 3.5mm. These days, I wish for a 4.4mm output because it's becoming increasingly common and I can just use it for almost everything. Output on the back includes one pair of XLR and RCA. This is perfect if you have an active speaker or want to use it as a preamp. 
Next, let's talk about sound. Taking things back to the V8000 Pro so that we have a little bit more context, the D8000 Pro from Final isn't the most difficult to drive planner headphone out there, but they do benefit vastly from proper amplification. You get a lot more dynamics, control, soundstage resolution, and nuances when amped properly. Proper amplification here would be for the headphone to have better levels of control and dynamics in terms of tone rather than it just plainly being loud. A lesser amplifier can certainly turn up the volume of the D8000 Pro but not in any manner or form where there is control. Also, the Soloist Voyager has tons of power in the hood, allowing for 10 watts at 16 ohms through the XLR output, which is more than you will honestly ever need. For me, when using the D8000 Pro with the Soloist Voyager, I found that the Soloist Voyager to have a rather natural signature that does not color the D8000 Pro while enhancing it beyond its normal means. Bass becomes very taut with excellent impact, dynamics are immediate and confident. Every time the bass drum hits, you get an immediate sense of impact and complementary resonance. Quality of bass afforded by the Soloist Voyager lends for great levels of clarity and control which is what I want from a high-end setup. You get no semblance of any mid-bass coloration that can add to bloat. I must applaud the Soloist Voyager on delivering a clean, dynamic and mercurial bass. These qualities should make it very versatile among other headphones as well. Next up, mid-range. How the Soloist Voyager renders mid-range is largely dependent on how it did for bass. I established that it has a clean, clear and dynamic approach and this builds a very distinct stage for the mid-range. I found vocals to sound again very clear with excellent resolution and texture. It does not add any colour which is to be applauded. Micro nuances in the voices are very audible. Should the recording have a sense of air around the vocals, you will pick them up on this set. Treble, treble extension afforded by the Soloist Voyager 2D D8000 Pro Limited Edition is again, it's again great as it feeds enough power and you get no semblance of shrill, just pure control. With the D8000 Pro, just for fun, I once ran it with my Apple dongle, uh, the one that came with your iPhone. Uh, treble on it was really rather shrill and lacking any form of control, so I know this is an extreme example, but you get my point. This is a heaven and hell comparison, so so much better on the slowest Voyager. Clear, smooth with great control. Air is a plenty as well, which aids in the perception of soundstage, allowing for the whole setup to sound more holographic. Soundstage, the D8000 Pro and Soloist Voyager lens for a very holographic listen with fantastic 3D qualities done in a very cohesive manner. Width and height is fabulously wide and probably one of the best I've heard on a planar. Tall and wide. But what is cool is that there is very good cohesion with other aspects of soundstage, such as depth and positioning as well. It all works extremely cohesively and creates a huge staging. Depth and positioning, depth is aided by the solid dynamics of this combination. Positioning again is pinpoint and greatly aided by concise treble response. Pretty fantastic I must say, but I think if you are looking for soundstage, the Stax X9000, because it's electrostatic, it's slightly ahead but it does not have the same sort of meat that is afforded by the D8000 Pro. Of course, not all things are perfect. Let's talk about some things I like and do not like about the Burson Soloist Voyager. So what I like, the Soloist Voyager takes a sonic come first approach, opting for a class A amplification that negates distortion at the expense of efficiency is the way to go if you want to milk out every ounce of performance. I also enjoyed its natural, easygoing nature that does not negotiate when it comes to dynamics and resolution, allowing it to pair with almost any headphones quite well. It is also surprisingly musical as well. So some things I do not like about the Soloist Voyager. I know this is oxymoron but um, the Soloist Voyager does run a little warm and this is also due to me never turning the amp off ever so that it sounds the best. So yes, it has been consistently on 24-7 during the review period. I feel like this is a missed opportunity but I felt that they should have included a 4.4mm output as well as, as I feel that for such a high-end amp, there are many who would like to dabble in both portable and headphones and these days most people use 4.4 jack as well and it's the one jack to rule them all. And 
Finally, rating. Is this a blind buy, must try, consider, or one day for you to give your enemy? Is this a blind buy, must try, consider, or give your enemies type of headphone amp? I really enjoyed the Slowest Voyager and feel a tinge of sadness when I had to pack it into the box to return them. But one thing is for sure, the Soloist Voyager is certainly expensive and I cannot suggest blind buying these unless you are filthy rich. If you're looking for a flagship headphone amp for your headphones, do give the Soloist Voyager a serious try if possible as this is an astounding amp. I would seriously say seriously consider these. If you have the chance to try them, please go and try them. Bring your favourite cans to the store, sit there, give it a serious listen. It should drive most headphones perfectly well and should pair very easily with them because I just find them so natural and easy to pair. And finally, in conclusion, I really enjoyed the Solis Voyager. I feel a bit sad packing them up and giving them back to Burson, but you know, this is a review unit. I can't keep them. Uh, it's a bit of, I do feel a bit sad when it comes to that. Uh, yeah. So anyways, if you like today's content, please kindly press the like and subscribe button. It will help me out immensely. And thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, the next coming weeks, uh, videos will be a bit slower. There'll be one video a week for the next two weeks. Sorry about that because I'm traveling to Japan having my holiday. Uh, finally. Yeah, but this time as a family. So yeah, with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys soon.